Hello everyone and welcome back to 4 Pixels. Coco and Kimi are here with Buttons and Leifele from Cacophony of Games and we are continuing the letter where we have just started off Marianne's chapter. She is trash. Look at that she poster. <laughs> trash, trash. Seriously. Seriously though, look at that poster. Fucking weeb. <laughs> mm hmm. Even I more so, a lesbian poster. Weeb. Yeah, <laughs> she's a lesbian weeb. She she's got that poster with the two girls sitting together, mm. being all romantic. Oh god, jeez, I guess that means she's the fourth pixel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we have found her at last. Is she Irish or Scottish? Irish. Oh, thank um, God. Um, <laughs> Becca is the Scottish one. Hmm? Becca's the Scottish one. Thank you. I couldn't remember who was what. The numbers are so little on the top of my screen. And they glare at me with such intensity that I can just hear their accusations. Oh, that's good. Wow. Wow. Damn. <laughs> I'm late for a night out with the girls, yes. But I have a perfectly good excuse, Jays. Considering I don't... Oh. Well, it tripped you up. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Considering I didn't follow typical office hours. They really can't expect me to be able to just go as I please at 5.30 on the dot. The client is, first and foremost, my priority. I have to sit tight when my personal assistant, Chris, tells me where we have a big one coming up and that I shouldn't miss this one. Just noting she has a picture of a girl on her on right next to her computer. Mm-hmm. She does, and she has more girls like on the picture, I think. Like mm -hmm. on her bed. <laughs> He knows a lot more on the who's who and the what's what when it comes to these socialites and I trust that judgement call. I really don't have time for rich people, their drama and their politics. Oh. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> these sort who were born with silver Ugh. These sort who were born with silver spoons in their mouth and who are used to wagging their silver tongues about. I let him handle the negotiating with them for the most part. Why else would I have hired him? But he told me I'd receive a message about it an hour ago. Now, if only he has the full shilling when it comes to the time. Come on! I have a social life too, you know! To an extent. Ugh, what the heck is that? <laughs> I have no idea, in all fairness. True, to be honest. <laughs> it's fake. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one day on this earth I will not be compulsively like needed to respond with that. <laughs> oh. Man, I, I need to do a quick story because this was amazing and unfortunately I didn't record it. But you need to know about this awesome joke that Marco made. We were recording Ace Attorney yesterday and I was using OBS. And I was, mm -hmm. fortunately, the screen capture is working well now that I'm, I'm guessing it was malfunctioning before because of the capture card. But I had cropped the uh, windows a little to get rid of the borders that comes with those old DS games. And for some reason, they returned. And I was like, why did these borders return? He was like, trumped around or something. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Holy shit. Nice one, Marco. That was good. <laughs> you still can't come on our island base, though. <laughs> Oh. Pressing my head against the table, I try to stave off an oncoming headache when the notification for a new email pops up. 
All I'm expecting is, hey, this looks like a good project I found. Let's send them a design. Or something like that, really. That's often how it goes. Even with these rich, jammy clients who's heard of me from their equally rich, jammy friends, I can't expect them to hire me right off the bat. Which is all well and good and reasonable. We figure out what they want, send them my portfolio, my drafts for their projects, my rights, and hope for the best. This is a big client, Marianne. I'll babysit better with the L for you. This fucking nerd. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I love her so much. <laughs> Just please take this one project. I promise this person is huge in Luxborn. Huge! Huge. Chris huge. Oh, God, no! Yoohoo.com. <laughs> He's invaded everything. What? 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 Oh. Where are you, Buttons? I think you got thrown into the under. No, hello, I am here. Oh, oh, you came out of the cup. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I had my head in my hands because I was making the Trump huge joke. <laughs> ah! Weird joke in the fucking wall. This particular Let's Play is getting political. Oh, no. No, you just read this part, so I'm not going to read it again. Mr. Parker. This is a formal request to secure the services of Barry Ann McCullough, here and after called the designer. It's Johannes. Johannes Schrocken. Yes. J.N. Schrocken at xmail.com. I'm X really appreciating that uh, Chris Parker's is at yuhu.com. Just yes. saying. <laughs> <laughs> but xmail. It's not Garfield mail anymore, it's xmail. Truth. As authorized by Hannah Wright, here and after called the client, for interior design work at Ermingard Mansion, Luxford LX 180RF, United Kingdom. The client hopes to have the designer here there on 21 October Friday, with the time pending. But as I open the mail, I see that I've been requested by the client specifically? Well, I certainly didn't expect that. And it's pretty straightforward, too. Anyone else would probably be excited. They'd be working with THE Hannah Wright. Oops. She's just one of those rich socialites that everybody loves to talk about, no matter how hard I try to tune such nonsense out. It would have been enough for me to reply an affirmative to Chris and leave, but he has never pleaded for me to take a project before. We've worked with big personalities in the past. Celebrities, bankers, and even a few politicians. My PA had been indifferent about those. So the question bounced about my scholar before I spy one of the email attachments. A newspaper clipping from the Luxborn Daily Business News section boasting the headline, Wright Enterprise donates 2.5 million to refuge. To refuge. It certainly caused quite a stir back then. Apparently, they had invited businessmen and socialites everywhere, in the guise of it being some big business announcement. <laughs> That's hilarious. And an expensive looking party to boot. These people sure know how to throw their money around. Let me read this. Right Enterprise donate 2.5 mil to Refuge UK. At the grand opening of a new Wright Hotel last Wednesday, our local billionaire couple, Luke and Hannah Wright, announced the donation of $2.5 million to help Luxborn Refuge keep their services open. Unexpected, but certainly welcome, this follows only a month after the couple's previous donation of the same amount to Save the Children UK. One of the largest donations, this amount will help keep the safe house in Luxborn open for several years. With this money, Refuge can, help, can keep helping women, children, and victims of domestic the smetic violence. <laughs> there <laughs> are rumors as well of the charity talking with a couple and looking into building a local center equivalent to their Gaia and Athena locations. These rumors have come to us due to one of the enterprise's employees, 
mentioning a uh, project EOS. Is that how you pronounce that? Mm-hmm. I like how they're all a uh, Greek name, just so <laughs> I throw that one out there. But I don't know if it's the same in the UK. But in the US, most nonprofits, when you give a donation, they take a percentage out for um, uh, operating fees and the rest go to whatever the, the cost is. So if you assume it's at like a standard 5 to 10%, that still means that they donated a substantial shit ton to the charity. Yeah. Yep. Uh, not that I should be so callous. They're going to do a lot of good and help a community of people with all those pounds. Oh shit, yeah, it's pounds. The UK. <laughs> Not euros. Whoopsies! <laughs> I, of all people, shouldn't criticize such acts whether they were for show or not. At the very least, I know they'll be able to pay my rates. With the headline out of the way, however, I find myself staring at the picture that came along with the clipping. Oh, girl crush. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> because... Wow. Same. Same though, for real. <laughs> Here I am, expecting a sour old woman in a blazer and skirt. But the woman that was plastered on the front page looked like she belonged on the front page of the entertainment section, or even, if I'm to be crass, as the pinup for a glamour. Okay, I'll be real here. A men's magazine. Ha! <laughs> she sure knows how to rock that dress. Wow. <laughs> Yo, I relate to Marianne so hard right now. <laughs> you know, the dress that we... The dress that she's literally been wearing throughout this entire event. She's been wearing the same dress for like... A week and a half. Hey, when you it when you good. are rich and famous, you know what style suit you, and that's what you wear all the time. <laughs> well, okay, maybe it's not the same dress. Maybe she just bought out the entire store's worth of, like, all of the same dress <laughs> maybe. in her size. I mean, to be fair, I've done that with shirts that I like. <laughs> just bought all of them. Wait. Her hair, her eyes, her lips. She can't be her. What? And at the same time, she is her. Only several years older. Oh. She looks just like... No, come on, Mac. The world is full of pretty blondes. <laughs> it's just a coincidence. With a shake of my head, I snap out of it and reach for my phone when it buzzes, nearly falling off my chair in the process. Who else would be on the other line but the very people waiting for me? Oh, piss. I'm so sorry, Calm. I'm on my way. That's what I say. <laughs> Yet I still don't move from my chair, face flushed and heart racing. Jeez. <laughs> Relatable, though. <laughs> I can only stare until I can will myself to reply that yes, I'm accepting the assignment. And it takes even more time for me to just close the image, shut down the computer, and leave. Even then, it has already burned its image into my head, no matter how much I wish it would just disappear. And it makes me eager for the alcohol in the company. It makes me eager for anything that can help me forget. It's a good thing that the nearest pub is just a hop, skip, and a jump from here. The Galloway Shoal. Oh, sorry. No, nope, it's okay. Uh... I'm just impressed we actually have a different background from our usual haunts. <laughs> yeah, for real, though. <laughs> uh... Ooh, I can't. I was doing the journal reading for Zach. And I did it for, um... Han. So, it's your turn. Maybe. Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm confused because I was doing the reading for Isabella. Yeah, and I did it for, um... Oh, I think I you did it for Hannah. 
Oh, I thought Kimei did. All right, so uh, Kimei, your turn to read the journal. Okay. <laughs> An email from the right. <coughs> oh. <coughs> ah. You good? <laughs> don't die. <laughs> <laughs> if it's too much responsibility, you don't need to And yet <laughs> another death for the freaking Let's Play. Oh, Excellent. <laughs> death for the ghost god. An email from the right came, requesting Marianne McCall of expertise for their home. What seemed like an innocent commission made a different impact on the famous designer after seeing a picture of the right missus. Her second gay awakening. <laughs> I feel like this is more than her second, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Should I read this too? Yes. Okay, so Marianne McCullough. Birthday, July, July 14, Cancer, 30 years old, uh, 5'11 or 180 centimeters. Interior designer, former architect. Irish, uh, religion, Roman Catholic, education, bac bachelor? Bachelor. Bachelor. Yeah. Bachelor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bachelor of Arts in Architecture. Like chocolate, cats, classical arts, country music, karaoke, board games, video games, anime, and other obscure pop culture items. Yoga. Oh god, I A am woman after our own, own hearts. <laughs> I know, right? Oh my god. God, <laughs> down to the country. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh whoa, left in a dumpster as a baby, she was What the found fuck? <laughs> okay, left I in was a not left in a dumpster. <laughs> I know I am trash, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> left in a dumpster as a baby, she was found by a peddler. Peddler? peddler? What's a peddler? what's a peddler? Uh somebody who travels and sells things. It's kind oh. of outdated. I don't really think peddler is used much. Uh -huh. She was found at a peddler and spent most of her childhood roaming the countryside in a beat up band. Her father taught her how to read, write, and pray. Though an unconventional life, it was all she knew. Ch child welfare and protection eventually cut on and required that she have a proper education. She was provided a scholarship at St. Sam 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 School for young ladies and was bullied bullied for being a country lad charity charity kid a uh, charity kid I can I can read it. yeah I figure it's probably it's a little blurry Marianne only had one friend and was mostly focused on her studies intent on graduating and returning to her father a shame that he was. Diagnosed with Alzheimer's soon after. Woof. Her work as an architect in Ireland lasted until the Irish economic crisis. Yes. She moved to Eng England and after some time, Luxburn in search of better career opportunities. What is a drawing of her kitty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I the kid. Okay, anyway. Uh, the Galloway Shoal, as it's called by those who frequented the place, is the only decent Irish pub in this county. One is new if they call it by its the crawl bar. Mm -hmm. Can you read that line again? You kind of got cut off. Now! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can pretty much tell that someone's... <laughs> Apparently, she really can't read that line again. <laughs> oh, this is rough. <laughs> you can pretty much tell that someone is new. If she'll name the crawl bar. I find it funny that you just completely drop the accident with accent when you read it. the crawl bar. <laughs> it's a dumb name. <laughs> <laughs> My home away from home ever since I've moved to Luxbourne. Relatable. Well, that is when I'm not cooped up in my condo and working anyway. It has good alcohol, good company, and thank God and Saint Cecilia, good music. Why Saint Cecilia? Why <laughs> Carl's favorite. Yeah, right. 
<laughs> all favorites like the bossy noise, the high Wesleyan, Wesleyan men, and second fusion orchestra are often played. Not to mention the singing. I love singing. Anyone could just break out into a drinking song, and the others in the pub were just wonderful that they'd start singing along. That actually sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. And doing so well in Toxic. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because I relate so hard. <laughs> <laughs> and doing so well intoxicated is the best way to go about it. Hi. It's a win-win as long as I don't puke in the middle of the cars. Uh. And as long as I can get home in one piece and at the end of the day. You don't drink quite that much. Oh, college was wild, let me tell you. <laughs> and my buttons, buttons goes pretty hard sometimes. Yeah, true facts. It's unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, how many how many balls in a night of wine do you do you down? <laughs> Not no 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 no. But uh, the dive bar in your college <laughs> used to have a lot of that drunken random singing along. There's oh, something God. oddly charming and fun and yet horrific about a bunch of drunks screeching off key to Queen. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Having and tonight, been in that situation, yep. mm, I can relate. <laughs> and tonight is karaoke night. Ooh. What better time than to try and sing all my worries away? That's what my intoxicated brain tells me. Oh, I relate. <laughs> I relate! Oh yeah. Oh god. Oh. God. <laughs> this is like an image from a wet dream, Jesus. <laughs> but drinking only reminds me of my home. And the thought of home makes me think of her. But in the depths of my cold soul, I'll leave the burden and despair. God, that's gotta be so rough being Catholic in a Catholic predominant country and being a, being in love with somebody who's the same gender. <coughs> well, I'm mm -hmm. no longer there, but <laughs> God. <laughs> That's got like it's it's rough enough here, and we're technically not. But uh, mm. yep. it makes me nauseous. It sickens me that the smallest reminder of her can cause me such grief. I'll fight for what's worth fighting for. Forget the fear. Forget. Of course, I might just be the booze. Any other day, I would have scolded myself for drinking so much. I lied to the Lord, I lied to myself, I lied to you and everyone I care, until there were no more lies to tell. But I already have a client. We'll be having our first little meet and greet in a few days. Cowardice is easier than being brave. But alas, I found the strength I lost to sing my love letter to you. Cause people can lie, but my own heart beats true. I want to at least enjoy this night, get over the hangover tomorrow, and return to being a prim and proper professional after. That song was for Cam, our lucky bright to be. So give her a hand, Galway Shawl. Considering the state I'm in, one can excuse my smug grin as cheers and applause rise among the pub's patrons. Because Possibly off key public singing aside, I feel like I'm on top of the world right now. And that's a good reason as any to belt out in front of these strangers. With good drinks and good friends, there's nowhere else I'd rather be tonight. And I forget for a short while. And that song was brought to you by Marianne McCullough, everyone! A round of applause! Oh my god, her friends are attractive. 
Yeah. Every one of this game is attractive. How dare! That was so good. Right now, are super attractive. <laughs> can hold a tune, Marianne. A toast to our shameless drunk singer. May your drinks forever flow and your notes be ever lovely. I just want to put my face in the dark-haired girl's boobs. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I keep wow. staring at them and it's just like, I just want to put my all right, face in All there. right, everyone get the gay out. Just <laughs> out. Okay, so we all work out now? <laughs> Deserves a toast tonight. That's calm. Finally sealed the deal after three years, eh? Read them and wait, bitches. <laughs> Aruna's my girl. Oh shit! Sorry, I forgot the yeah, that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> Were you distracted, buttons? I was distracted by the ring, actually, like, I was trying to see it, and it's really hard with the lighting. Well, but yeah. Plus the Discord. And plus the beard. Or, the beer. The beard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Camilla's husband's beard, voice. Was, it's true. I was gonna say that, damn it. <laughs> Camilla's diamond engagement ring gleams as she holds it up for the world to see. She has reasons to be proud. Three years of living together, and her boyfriend finally asked her the big question. Obviously, she said yes. Don't get too attached to that ring or the one after, sweetie. I was wearing a wedding ring not so long ago, and look at where I am. Nice. But enough of me being a downer. Nice and Cheers to a happy engagement! Of course, if something like Haruna's divorce were to have Divorce? <laughs> Divorce were to happen, I'd be there for Cam. Just as Cam had been there for me, acting more than just my yoga instructor. I can't be happier for my friend right now. Cheers! Cheers! Well, we both will be there for Cam, won't we? Haruna and I? Haruna. It's been a real bad year for her ever since her divorce. She's such a nice person, even lending me money to open a studio. And she didn't deserve what her husband had pulled. I'm happy she's smiling again and picking out like she used to. I think we've all missed our Japanese firecracker. We met in yoga class, something I joined to keep myself in shape. And, well, honestly, so that I can make friends when I had moved to Luxburn. Clearly, it works like a charm. And it definitely didn't have anything to do with the fact that I had brought along my lucky D20- Oh! <laughs> Why? Why did wow. I like her so much? <laughs> I'm going to curl up under my desk in shame. She is really the fourth pixel, Coco. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you like you, you, the new member, Kanetsu. Oh, that's gonna love Marianne even more. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it definitely didn't have anything to do with the fact that I brought along my lucky D20 die with me on that first day. No, sir. I love these girls so much. What about you, Marianne? You're 30 years old and you still haven't got yourself a man. And you guys know I have. <laughs> well, you see about that. I don't have time Ooh, that face. Oh, come on! That's a lame excuse and you know it! You need a man who'll take care of you and you need it now! Maybe some hunk will be your house hubby while you rake in the dough! I'm quite yeah, sure Hannah the house hubby. Care of myself. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> right. Ha <laughs> 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 Well done, <laughs> <Bing>. Well done. <laughs> Amazing. 
Oh, that's so beautiful. I that's amazing. <laughs> hey, look at me. I'm Marion McCullough, a lawful neutral cleric with nine points in wisdom, eight in charisma, but I can't give myself a date. Jesus. Oh, uh, I've played that character so much. <laughs> I, I, oh, please. I mentioned druids and demons once. Once! They don't even know the rules or understand what the numbers mean. And I certainly am not some sort of holy person. I'm a far cry from a miracle worker. And I barely have the willpower to fight off demons. Especially my own. Oh, well. That went dark. She isn't looking for a Mr. Right, but a Mrs. Right. Hey. Hey. <laughs> she might not be, but we all are. <laughs> oh my Marianne, we still love you even if you're in the closet. That would explain some things. How do you know you don't have a ring anymore? Maybe you two can be together and I don't have to worry about my best girls being alone. <laughs> I'd be down for it. <laughs> I mean same. <laughs> <laughs> but with that we will wrap up this episode right here thank you guys for joining us and see you next time bye bye bye, bye. oh <laughs> it'd be terrible if that happened right I actually have no idea what the proper choice for this one is I think it's you might be overthinking it and did it is. Uh, you think so uh, let's think the opposite. You get lucky and meet a nice person, and you tell him or her your situation. In that case, what would happen to you then? I live happily ever after. If you said you had amnesia, wouldn't they force you into a hospital? I'm not sure what the treatments for amnesia are. I think at that point you just rely on guardians and, and dependents to take care of you. You'd probably be confined to your hospital room until your memories returned. I doubt it's that way. <laughs> I don't think so either. Yeah. I don't in oh, in the real world, I mean, presumably there are they've got to be outlying cases, but, but in the real world, what amnesia actually is is an inability to remember new things. So huh. you may still remember a lot of things that happened, like when you were much younger, because like um. I had an uncle, he's passed now, uh, God rest his soul, who caught a really horrible disease that attacked the lining of his brain when he was quite young, like maybe about 25. And he had, he couldn't remember anything that ha happened, like, even an hour ago, you know, like for the rest of his life. But he could remember mm. everything about being a wee boy and like growing up and marrying his wife and like his children being born. Because that happened before he caught the disease. 